Hello, the Sun Gazette is pleased to have State Representative Jamie Flick joining us today to talk about a new legislative initiative that he is beginning. Thank you for stopping by, Mr. Flick. My pleasure. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the legislation that you're working on to introduce cameras to the state's uh, courtrooms? Sure. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. And again, thank you for having me. Uh, I had a number of constituents come to me throughout the last few months about having cameras in the courtroom. So I did some research, worked with my aides down in Harrisburg, and uh, I, I guess a little bit to my surprise, there's never been legislation introduced for this. It appears as though we're one of only five states that doesn't have some sort of legislation for the Court of Common Pleas. So this is not for appellate courts or for Supreme Court, it is the county court, if you will. Um, so looking into that, I decided to move forward and introduce some legislation, and we're just really at the beginning stages right now. And you mentioned earlier that uh, there would be exemptions and exceptions to, the, to these cameras. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what some of those you, you envision would be? Yeah, sure. This is, um, you know, this is not sort of a gotcha system whatsoever. We certainly would not want children or juveniles to be recorded in any type of case whatsoever, especially a case that might involve incest or rape or murder like that. So there would be exemptions for that. Um, the cameras would not by any means show the jury or show people in the audience. So we're going to look at what other states have done. We're also going to look for a maybe a pilot. So I will be approaching Lycoming County Court, um, maybe the president judge, to see what her thoughts may be on this as we move forward through the process. Uh, what are some of the advantages or reasons why Pennsylvanians should want cameras in their courts? Yeah, that's a great question. I would, I would offer two words to begin with that, and that would be uh, transparency. We definitely want to look at that, and accountability. And that's not just transparency for the judge or accountability for the judge, so, but certainly that's a factor, but also for the plaintiff, for the attorneys, for the defendant, uh, for the witnesses. So you would have a chance to review this footage or to see it live as it goes forward. I think another part of that question and advantage would be, you can get a copy of the transcript right now. So you can go to the Pythonotary, you can go to the court, and the example I've given would be, um, you're looking at the written word, which is by the court reporter, and it could be something to the effect of, Mr. Maroney, um, you know, you could have filed that motion six months ago, and you chose not to. Pretty, I'd say pretty innocuous. You look at that print, Nothing wrong with that whatsoever coming from a judge. But if you had video, and that's not going to go viral. Text doesn't go viral anymore. If you had a video and audio of the exact same text, and the judge is standing up, and the robe is open, and he's finger pointing, and there's foam coming out of his or her mouth, and he says the same words, Mr. Maroney, you could have filed this motion six months ago, and you chose not to. Well, that, something like that extreme, that could certainly go viral, the video part of that, the audio part of it. So it puts it in context. What you see in writing, everybody knows this, right? Just by looking at a text message is not the same as a voicemail. So the voice, the audio per se, and the video, huge difference in um, accountability and transparency. Thank you for stopping in today. My pleasure. All right. Thanks.